All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Did you guys miss me? Uh, no pocket change market report. Monday market report coming this Monday, right before um, 4th of July, Independence Day. Uh, so with that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday week. Hopefully you guys are safe if you're going to engage in some of those fireworks activities out there. Uh, so I'm back, baby. Uh, back from the... Um, uh, the Northeast Oklahoma uh, coin show that was being held in Tulsa. Got to meet um, a lot of the other um, YouTube influencers uh, like uh, Rob from Rob Finds Treasure, Rich from Silver Seeker, uh, and a number of other uh, amazing uh, folks. And, um, you know, it was just, it was a great time. I'm going to do it again next year. Uh, I had the opportunity to talk to dozens of my fans uh, that came in attendance. And uh, it was cool. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I lost my voice uh, over the weekend. Uh, so it's it's still not 100%. You'll have to bear with me. If it becomes too much of an issue, you, of course, you could always mute it and uh, do the good old um, captions on there. I suppose uh, would work out just as well. If you wanted to read, of course. But uh, yeah, don't think I would miss at least, at the very least, a Monday Market Report. Uh, I think we're seeing uh, kind of a continuation of what we've been uh, experiencing the last few weeks. Just some amazingly ridiculous, modern, like ultra-modern Lincoln cents sold here this week. And I couldn't possibly cover them all, but I did pick, I would say, the, the top five or six. Um, yeah, I, again, uh, registry set folks are, are filling in the gaps here. All right, we're seeing... Coins that customarily doesn't show up in the marketplace, and I, I know there's a good fair amount of folks that they don't understand the Top Pop registry set market um, because it's one that's been growing, I would say, for the last like 10 to 15 years. It's, it's a very young aspect of numismatics, and one that there's a lot of support, uh, both financially and within the hobby as far as the graders and uh, um, auction houses and dealers and things like that. Just really procking this up um, to levels that we have never experienced. And it's given giving us some insight as to the possibilities of kind of dipping our toe in this. But it is, it's, it's always, you know, measured with a, a lot more element of risk, right? Because it's... Um, it's um, it's playing into the gambler's fallacy if you're the one submitting these coins to the graders because the money's just so good on them right now that you want to genuinely take advantage of it and participate, uh, you know, in the hopes of um, scoring yourself one of these uh, lightning in a bottle events, I would say. Uh, so we're going to talk about some of those. Uh, we're not going to go into too much detail about the coin show. In this one, I'm going to do a completely separate video actually showing my face for that one. Uh, kind of talking about a little bit of some of the things that went right, some of the things that could use improvement for the future. Um, and then, you know, it's just, I personally invite you guys to check that out. Probably be later today sometime. Uh, but it'll be, uh, it'll be fun, uh, just to kind of recap things for that. I'll show you a few pieces that I did buy. Um, and my, my wife went a little bit crazy on some of the things that she wanted as well. So we'll look at those too. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, these are all realized great collections listings that sold here in the, um, last, uh, day. Uh, all of the auction activity came to a close yesterday for the previous week. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start it off on uh, a beast of a coin. This thing is actually uh, a, a lot more ridiculous than first thought. Um, but a 2020 Lincoln Shieldson, it's only three years old. But again, it doesn't matter what date of coin it is. There is going to be a massive amount of need and desire for such pieces for those top flight registry coin sets. And registries have been blowing up. There's more people getting into it. Uh, and they're not shy about, you know, opening up their checkbook to obtain the pieces they need. And that's including some of the more ultra modern stuff from just the last few years. I believe we saw, what was it? 2021 from last week or 2022, uh, that sold for a number of thousands of dollars. Okay. This one right here is a mid state 68 red. 
And I want you guys to kind of notate that particular numerical grade because that's going to be the, um, I guess, that line drawn in the sand. This is where you need to be for the coin to be worth what you want it to be. Uh, because if it grades anything less than this, it's just not going to do as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, these things um, uh, are very risky. They have no safety net whatsoever. Uh, it's either 68 or bust. So this one ended up selling, get this, get this, for $4,387.50. Uh, one of the more uh, just uh, jaw-dropping uh, pieces of the week. And uh, yeah, that's how we're kicking things off here on the good old MMR. Uh, we also have a 1999 uh, version here. Again, this is all registry set. And uh, this one, however, is a Mint State 69 Red, uh, which is indeed the highest grade known to man for a 1999 Philly uh, Memorial set. Uh, so again, you would need to be at this grade level uh, for it to have some sort of meaningful uh, secondary market. Uh, I believe this is a pop one. I believe this is a pop one. Uh, only one known uh, in existence uh, at this grade level. So it's quite unique for now. This one ended up selling for $16,312.50. So again, I mean, I marvel at such things because, you know, we always want to do the, uh, the the comparison model here when it comes to the price. $16,000. Would you rather buy something like this? Or would you buy yourself a whole bunch of gold? Would you rather buy that one rare type coin? Or, or maybe for the first time ever, grab yourself a really nice like Dahlonega or Charlotte gold piece. There's a lot of things here that we could touch with $16,000. And, you know, that could be something that you could possibly aim for. Now, the big key with submitting such coins is you have to submit a whole bunch of them. You're going to have to pay $30 a pop or however much it is to grade these things. You don't dare send just one. And that's kind of like the recipe to um, uh, for success for a lot of these high-end registry set type coins is that they just don't send one. They sell 50, they send 50 of them to PCGS and then hoping that one comes back at that grade. Uh, so there you go. This is one of the more um, Ostentatious, I guess, is probably the best word to describe this uh, this coin. Ostentatious coins to have sold this week, and um, there's still more. Like, how about this one? 97. Again, no frills, no varieties. Um, it's not the doubled ear that we all love. Uh, of course, you know, I'm sure that coin in a very high grade is going to be uh, pursued by some variety registry sets as well. Uh, again, 69 is where you need to be here, which is what this one is. And this one sold for $7,144.88. Uh, so again, another high-end piece uh, with a lot of, I guess, unrealistic expectations for a lot of folks that say, well, I think I have one of those. Um, you know, traditionally, these are found in, in uh, BU rolls, and then they're cherry-picked for quality. Um, they have to be essentially perfect. You know, uh, in order for them to be at this grade level, because if there's one nick on there, I'm sorry, guys, it's just not it's not in the cards to obtaining a 69. And in 87, uh, although we have seen um, a few other 1987 Philadelphia Lincoln Memorials that did grade out at a 69 red, which call it like it is, it's going to be more so a perfect grade for these type of coins. Um, I think there's maybe only one or so dates from the last 35, 40 years that have ever hit that mid-state 70 grade. Uh, don't know what it is. I can let you guys know in some other video. But um, 69 is usually going to be the top of the bell curve on these. Uh, this one ended up selling at $4,050. Again, there's a lot of demand and desire here for these. And, um, you know, we're just continuing to see this needle move. Uh, in large strides, strides each and every single month. But again, we have to understand, we have to understand when it comes to grading ultra-modern registry set coins, every time you try and grade these things, if you're lucky enough to get that top pop grade, when you introduce it into the market, that essentially um, erodes the value of all the existing coins in that particular grade because we're entering more supply into the marketplace 
And usually the people that want to pay these thousands of dollars for these coins, you know, we might be talking about a handful of them, all right, probably 10 or less. So once we have all of these people within this group of 10 that have obtained MN State 69 Red 87, you're just not going to see the prices realize the strong money as they used to. I could be wrong. Again, we're seeing more people enter this space here. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the money is flowing like like wine and water. 1975, I mean, yeah, no, no big uh, surprise here. Another top-end graded coin, Mint State 68 Red is the highest grade level you could obtain. 475 Philadelphia. Uh, coin looks fantastic, you know. Uh, it really needs no other introduction here. $14,062.50. I believe there's only like one or two in a 60, 68 Red. Very, very tough coin. To find with minimal Planchet nicks and marks. Um, this one is about one of the better ones I've seen here recently. And uh, 64D, uh, this used to be one of the uh, the marquee registry set bombs back in the day when it comes to the Memorial Series. Um, 64P, 64D, 63 Denver, uh, 61 and 62 Denver's for, for both of those. You know, are among a few of those coins that if you're able to hit that, you know, that meniscus, that mint state 67 and higher, man, those things are worth a boatload of money. Uh, we're at 67 plus red here for this particular example, uh, which again, for a lot of these coins, that's where you need to be, except maybe the 63D, 67 is still the top grade for that coin. Uh, this one right here is sold for $4,331.25. And uh, I believe this is the last one cent DNOM coin of the week. It's a 42D, a very nice, clean, present, present, presentable coin. Sorry about that. PCGS assigned mid state 68 red on this one. It's a beautiful looking coin. Again, the, the further back you go, um, gray does matter, certainly. And uh, the prices just continue to uh, uh, elevate each and every time one hits uh, that, that prime number. $13,567.50 was the final tally on this one. By the time the dust settled, someone will have paid five figures for this one. Now we're on to nickels. And, you know, like I said last week, you know, nickels have a little bit of a uh, tough act to follow because Lincoln's is where it's at. You know, it's, uh, it is the most important, the most well-collected series um, from all budget levels. And I think that's why that... Lincoln Sense will uh, continue to command this this bearing presence of the must-have, the must, you know, obtain coins. Um, and, you know, I, I'd say Nichols is a distant second or third place. Quarters, I would say, is the undisputed second place. Uh, quarters are actually a lot more popular than you guys realize. So we have a 46D. Uh, highlighted with a little bit of uh, like a gold tone on the obverse, uh, little hints of pink and magenta in certain areas. It's attractive. Um, this one has has the goods uh, to, to give it the full steps. So it, it does appear to have very well-struck steps uh, with minimal interruptions. Again, PCGS and NGC can grade full steps. At a minimum of five full complete steps, these have generally six so they'd be willing to forego that bottom step if it's too uh, too nicked up. And still earned a full steps designation. Uh, so this particular coin ended up selling for $1,299.38. Uh, there are a number of these particular dates at this grade level. And sure, Jefferson Nickel Nuts, that, that value full steps uh, will pay a lot more for a coin if it, they just don't show up in the marketplace. This one has shown up. A fair amount of times and that's the big reason why it's only 1200 bucks and not 10,000 like a few of the Lincolns that we saw prior uh, 45p uh, again everybody's favorite type coin because of its different composition these are the wartime silvers uh, but believe it or not it's an NGC mid-state 67 plus okay this no full steps on this one and it shows it's quite worn on the reverse there uh, not so much worn but it's just flat and not very well struck uh this one sold for one thousand four hundred four dollars uh so still some pretty good value even without the full steps designation and uh 1939 reverse of 40 ddr this is the doubled monticello mid-state 68 
one of the top grades you could obtain without the full steps. They do grade these with full steps, by the ways. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there have been a few examples uh, that are FS that are worth a lot of money. Uh, but 68 is probably the top end of the mark, um, numerical grade-wise, without the full steps that you want to be at. Um, I would say anything above six, mint state 65, you're golden. All right, the coins are going to be very, very nice and expensive. Uh, this particular one right here sold for $3,150. Again, a very nice sale here. Uh, I believe we have two Buffaloes. The 30 AD, you know, one of the more run of the mill common. Uh, these were hoarded in uh, mid state condition as the, uh, at release, of course, uh, when the U.S. Mint was transitioning over to the Jefferson Nickel design. Uh, it's a dual. Dual release year, um, which we've seen before, uh, so ingoing and outgoing. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, just finding one uh, that exhibits you know the best looking strike, strong luster, which a lot of them do have, but just the overall cleanliness of the coin is really going to win the day here. NGC Mid State 68 for this one, and it sold for two thousand thirty one dollars and twenty four cents. By no means the top grade. I be, believe sixty eight plus. And PCGS is the finest grade for this coin. Uh, and here's the 1926. Uh, it's a Philadelphia. Uh, very nice luster. That's something you just don't see too much of during the 20s. Uh, NGC got this one at 67. And it's also got a CAC green bean as well. Uh, beautiful looking coin. I like this one. $2,259 was the sale price. Um, generally, 1920s buffaloes uh, tend to suffer in the strike department. And we see that a little bit here compared to the 38 where you see a lot more hair detail above the little knot of the, um, the, the, um, the hair tie right there. Whereas on this one, it's quite a bit more flat. Uh, and we do have a couple Roosevelt's and a few Mercury Dimes. Uh, Roosevelt's is still, still, you know, pounding the pavement or knocking many doors here. 1952D Roosevelt dime uh, showing a lot of that original skin tone on the obverse. It could have very well been maybe a roll ender at one point. Uh, this one, PCGS got is a mid state 68 full bands. So it's got a nice heavy strike on the reverse. Um, again, toning usually um, does really well on these coins. And, uh, you know, if, um, if a grader sees one with this originality on there, they, they will give extra consideration, maybe a half a point grade bump for such things, um, as long as they're, they're not too, like, terminally black on there. Uh, so this one sold for $3,093.75. Again, we're seeing a power play here for registry set owners of Roosevelt's. Um, there are a few uh, dates that we've seen that don't come up into the marketplace at the highest grade and now we've seen a few here just in the last two weeks uh and then also this one here just a good old 1950p roosevelt it's a philadelphia minted coin uh love that tone and kind of like the uh, the nice striations that's on there uh the color is very pleasant too uh i'm a fan of that um kind of like uh the, the magenta going into some areas of olive green it's a very very attractive coin uh, nonetheless uh, this one sold for $1,968.75. pennies, And uh, our two Mercury Dimes. Uh, I mean, we all got to love a nice blast white example, a 38S. It's a somewhat tough date um, uh, to find in, in grades above mid-state 65. Uh, especially if you're looking for raw, there's just not a whole lot of them out there. Um, uh, people were kind of privy to the fact that these, uh, these are gradable targets and, um, you know, they are very worthwhile as a result. Mid-state 68 full bands on this one. Again, you got a really nice, well-struck example that sold for $4,293. So again, well done here on this one. And then, uh, finally, 1931, you know, some would say it's one of the tougher dates. It can be. I wouldn't quite put it on a pedestal of semi-keys, uh, but it is worth mentioning that these do have a little bit lower mintage value uh, between the 31, 31S, and a few others. Uh, NGC, again, NGC, um, you know, making some strides here this week in the grading air arena. Mid-state 67 plus full bands is what we have here on this one. $6,131.25 was the final sale price for this monster. 
All right, we do have uh, some quarters. How about 1962? Uh, Blue Ridge, you talk a lot about these 1960s Washington quarters at high grades, but they all have toning, man. How about a nice blast white? Looks like it came out of a bankroll level of coin. Well, there you go, guys. We got one here for you, finally, right? Uh, again, NGC touched this one. Uh, they gave it a Min State 67 plus. Just examine the coin. The fields are very clean on here. So if you even consider thinking about sending one of these to a grading service, those fields at the very minimum have to be virtually untouched by another coin, by human hands. It just has to be look like it was minted yesterday. Uh, CAC even gave a green bean on this one, which is a nice little, you know, a, a pairing addition to that. And, um, you know, I'm happy to say this, this one sold for $2,032.88. Very nice sale. And again, kind of shows you that toning doesn't have to be the one prerequisite for these things to be expensive. Like this one here. Uh, to some, this is not the most attractive toning. Kind of have that, that white skinned haze to it with little hints of gold in places. But again, that hints to the originality of the coin. All right. And that matters a lot to collectors and registry set folks. They want that originality untouched for the most part. PCGS grade this one as a mid state 68. And again, we're talking about Philadelphia coin here. Uh, I've, I've purchased a, a, a good fair number of 1940s Washington quarters in mid state condition for a few albums. And, you know, some of them you'll pay a little bit higher price, you know, the S minted coins. But generally for this one, you're going to be somewhere between $20 and $30, you know, for a mid state coin, which is not too bad. If you're a cherry picker at heart and you're looking for something that maybe you could send off to a grader that's a little bit more you know, has realistic expectations, always be on the lookout for coins like this. So this one sold for $5,193. Again, another just big, huge sale here. And the final quarter for this week is this 1912S. Uh, gotta love talking about other obsolete early type coins. Um, barbers have always long been one of my favorites. They are the workhorse of today's American coinage. You know, uh, finding some that are in mid-state condition is quite tough these days, especially in raw condition. Uh, this one right here is a mid-state 65 by PCGS. This one was graded probably 10 years ago, so it's an older graded coin. This one sold for $2,376, but this coin, folks, appeals to a wider range of collectors, from investors to typeset collectors, things like that. And the last two coins are a couple of just really notable large denoms. We have a 1967 Kennedy, good old 40% silver right here. Uh, these do matter. Um, registry sets are very strong for both this series and the next one we're going to talk about. Um, so some of these earlier 1960s Kennedys certainly have a, uh, a pretty good uh, hold on the marketplace at a certain grade level. And that would be mint state 67 for a lot of those dates. Like this one here by NGC ended up uh, selling for $3,610.12. Again, another really gigantic sale price for a coin that probably a lot of us can pick up for about five bucks or less. Um, cherry pick the right one with clean fields and uh, devices, and you're going to be on easy street when you go to send this one out. And then finally, I guess we ought to pay more attention to Ike dollars because, you know, every so often a listing comes up that ends up grabbing some major headlines. And no, folks, I'm not talking about the new corduroy pillows that you can buy, which creates some of the most epic headlines that you'll ever see. And that was a joke, by the way. I guess if I have to say it, it wasn't too funny, right? <laughs> uh, but 1971D clad eisenhower dollar i mean this is like wow i i own like 50 of these things right uh but finding one uh of course these were like bullseyes for bag marks and slide marks and all sorts of other issues uh planchet nicks were uh, kind of a common theme on these as well uh so you would certainly need to find one that grades out above mint state 67 and when you do they are worth a king's ransom this is a PCGS Mid State 67 Plus, just absolute bomberuski. And uh, how about $7,372.12? Again, there's a lot of support here from this series. 
from a registry set standpoint. And there's even people that are off the grid, off of those registry sets, that pick up some of these high-end Ike dollars. It's just an amazing series. But that's it. I don't have a whole lot left in my voice to talk about, but thank you guys again. Uh, again, it was a pleasure meeting all the folks that did come out to come see me. I had people drive far and wide just to want to shake hands with me, and that was amazing. It was fantastic. Uh, just a really great event to be a part of. Many thanks to Mike at Mid America Coins for um, for really championing this whole event. He's the guy that organizes it every single year. And uh, next year, it's going to be even better as well. So look out for that video. I'm going to talk about a few odds and ends about what I did like, uh, what I you know could see as an improvement opportunity for next time. But that's it. I'm out of here. Uh, so you guys take care. Have a wonderful week. Have a safe 4th of July. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next coin video. So long, guys.